Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Loki, episode number two, discussion of the variant. My name is Matt Jarbo, joined by my friend Resident Justice. How you doing, RJ? Doing pretty good. That was a great episode, actually. I, the know. Best. I, I, I was like losing my mind toward the ending of that. Like, it went in directions I was not expecting whatsoever. It, it went. Yeah, I was I was very happy with it. Um, I didn't know what to expect after last week because I know we talked about it and I really enjoyed just to kind of like the the letting the dialogue breathe and letting them have the conversations. And I wasn't too sure where the episode was going to go, because like when it started off and it by the way, the spoilers, if anyone here doesn't know that yet. Uh, but when it kicks off and they're like in they're in Wisconsin, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, uh, you know, back in 1985 and they go to the uh, they go to the the was it Oktoberfest or whatever. Um, and they, they play this like when the TVA show up and they're tracking the variant to, you know, like the tent and like the song starts to play. I was like, I was that that scene didn't work for me. I, I'm not going to lie. It, it felt like it felt a little forced. Yeah, that was the one pick I have of the episode as well. And it's I think it's mostly due to the song choice because it was Bonnie Tyler's, uh, you know, hero and all that. I'm like, yeah, they just played that for the Guardians of the Galaxy game reveal. It's like been in like so much stuff the last well, couple. No, it also know? was in the Masters of the Universe Revelation trailer. It was. Yeah. So it's like three times in one week we've heard that song. And don't get me wrong. I love that song. But when I hear that song now, I think of like the the climax of the movie Shrek 2. Same when, yeah. when Jennifer Saunders sings it. And I think like, you know, because that movie came out in what, oh, four and I was 22 and I think you were just born. So <laughs> it's, <right>. uh, <laughs> no, but, you know, but yeah, we've heard it a bunch of times this week and I don't really feel like the again, because like the setting it lacked the, the impact, I think it, it did because it was also dark. It was hard to see. It was darker because uh, it was inside the tent, it was dark. I mean, I thought it was pretty cool that like, you know, she mind controlled um the loki mind controlled the one woman who then like you know was taking out everybody but she's not a fighter like the 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 actress was not a fighter so it felt that felt a little bit on the force side but it was cool like when they grabbed the she grabbed the joust and she tried to like run it through the guy and it just broke on his chest plate that was, i thought that was pretty funny and then of course he just gets stabbed right you know it's like it's like this wooden this wooden pointy thing that failed but this metal pointy thing Stab, 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 stab. You yeah, it's pretty brutal, honestly. Like mind controlling one of them to make them fight and just beat the other ones to a pulp, you know, and then just go in for the kill with the knife. But look at the last one where, where they lured him into the swamp and it was all the oil and then just burned him. Yeah, that was that was crazy. You know, so it's like clearly this Loki is is very messed up. It is uh, very insane. And uh, and I, I'm, I'm really impressed with like kind of how diabolical screw it. it's lady loki we already knew that so it's uh if you've already seen the episode you already know I'm, I'm i'm really impressed with how diabolical her character is literally right off the bat yeah yeah i mean i had a, i think everyone kind of figured it was lady loki i mean in terms of like the actress it is uh, uh what's her name sophia di martino yeah um do you like the way that she looks because i've seen like yeah like yeah i'm not gonna lie like um that costume that works it works for me you know, it works for me. I'm not going to lie. I'm a man. Yeah. I, can I know some it. people it, it were like, oh, they kind of missed the long black hair. Or like the, No, the I, look, like, like I think it works for the show. Psycho, psycho blondes, man. I'm just saying it's like that will get a lot of people there. Uh, now, if it was a psycho redhead, I, I would all be over for me. I'd be in love. Um, but uh, no, no, the whole thing like, yeah, like uh, the look is fine with me because I don't read the comics. And a lot of the people mm -hmm. who are watching don't read the comics. But I'll tell you this, though. They did before doing that reveal. They did do something to where um i felt like they were going to that that we had already met kid loki and that was in the that was in when the kablooey gum came into play which we'll talk about that but that was kind of like that was a nice little i thought oh they already met that loki when uh, mobius was in the the french chapel right the cathedral mm. and the kid comes out and it was a little girl you were right i i saw the reopening of it again like oh i was wrong um, but, uh, you know, hands the gum and it's like, I thought that could have been like kid Loki. That would have been pretty cool. Cause that would have been, you know, them just screwing with people now, like the thing, but the episode I thought was really good is that it slowed it all down, right? That's kind of the, the, the best way about it. I think is it, it kind of slowed it all down and it really was about, you know, Loki and, and Mobius and them trying to establish a relationship and obviously we're getting a little bit of, of you know i wouldn't say like a little bit of character development with mobius we're getting a bit of like where his soft spot is 
um, in which he likes yeah, the broken really things. Yeah, building up that that uh, relationship between the two that I really liked. I mean, the opening of the episode, you know, you see Loki just working at the desk at the TVA. He's messing with the little hologram of Miss Minister that I really enjoyed. It's like he's really becoming more comfortable working there, I guess, or being a part of that little niche community there. Yeah, well, that was pretty funny, too. And I thought that was great. That's like, wait, are you real or are you a recording? Well, kind of a bit of both, you know, and then it's just Tara Strong having a bit of fun in the role, which I thought was also great. Uh, but it goes to show you that, yeah, he is taking the job seriously. I mean, as seriously as Loki as Loki would be taking it seriously uh, during this particular time. But he is trying to understand his surroundings. And so whether or not he's doing it because he actually cares or he's doing it because he's trying to get a one up on people in order to enact his his master grand plan it does kind of go either way because there's times where you think no 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 he's kind of he he's he's enjoying this versus other times when you're like no he is he is he running a game mm -hmm. but i think as the episode progressed and you know as we uh as we got to see more of owen wilson's character coming out and like you know with the whole thing with uh with the judge the conversation with the judge where you know like she kind of you can tell she wants to prune Loki. She's like, you know, she wants to prune him. He obviously is is not taking this seriously. But then, you know, the the, the whole thing with him, like, you know, look, I, I I see something there. I need to understand him to understand this as Loki. And it's 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 a bunch of mind games back and forth, which I thought really worked out well for like their dynamic because it like they have a great dynamic together. And but they also feel like they are. Oh, what's the word I want to use here? They feel like there's tension there. Yeah, I mean, probably my, one of my favorite scenes of the episode is when he's like explaining, like uh, Loki explains his apocalypse theory. He messes with uh, Mobius's lunch. He just like sprays all this, the salt and pepper and like pours the juice down the down like in the bowl, saying this yeah. is what the apocalypse event does. And like uh, uh, Mobius is like, please stop messing my food. Basically, <laughs> I thought that was really funny. No, that, that was a great thing about that, too, is what I enjoyed was that analogy, especially because it's like I was really wondering where they were going to go with what he was going to find. Right. Like what what Loki was going to discover in the files uh, and coming across the the Ragnarok incident over on Asgard and seeing that it had zero variant uh, detected, uh, variant energy detected. It makes sense that he's like, oh, they're hiding out in an apocalypse. And the idea there was by taking all the time reset charges, they could just reset time every time they need to and and just kind of keep redoing it in order to be safe in that environment that has no impact on the timeline whatsoever. And it's a great little way of kind of like undercutting all of the bureaucratic nature that is the TBA. Mm -hmm. And I thought I thought that was great finding that little wheelhouse uh, of just that little extra that they can't see because they're not looking for it because it's again, it, they, they're not thinking from that perspective, which I thought was pretty fantastic, um, especially when they go to they go down to uh, to Pompeii, you know, and oh, yeah, 70, 79 great. AD and he's all like, y'all gonna die. Yeah, and when he let the he lets the goats lose, he's like, I'm from the future. It's like, oh wait, are we from the future? It's kind of confusing. I don't really know myself, but I guess we are from the future. He's just like, you're all gonna die. And they're like, they're looking at him like he's like a weirdo. And then all of a sudden the volcano goes off and they freak out. Well, he's also saying that whole thing too in English, none of them speak English. So he was right. So, so he said we're from the future, and then he he said that in Italian. Um, and then he and then he started talking in English. And so they weren't going to know anything because everyone's running. Everyone's trying to get to where they're trying to get to. And then here's coming this like massively, you know, this the, the Pompeii. I, I remember learning about that when I was in social studies in, in middle school about that event. So I thought that was pretty cool that they brought that one up and not something that was like, you know, like, a, I, I mean, I thought like they were going to do something like a like a 9-11 gag. I really thought like they might do something as as bad as 9-11. You know what I mean? Like, just like. I'm glad they didn't. I know that's a stretch. Pompeii works, but it's like when that's where my mind went for like what is recent and what is what people would view as almost apocalyptic and terrible. And it's almost 20 years. And I don't know. I've been in this weird 20 year kick today anyway. Uh, but uh, but that scene was great. And then I like how the two were kind of like bonding uh, after that by just talking about the jet ski. Because that's also foreshadowing. That's also a oh, lot of like, foreshadowing. Oh, yeah, that's totally foreshadowing to something later. It has you to know, be. It's going to be like, why, why does he like Jeski? It's like, well, there was a brief moment in the 90s where those things are really cool. And it is kind of like, you know, you look at, let's say, Demolition Man and Sandra Bullock's character had a fascination with the 80s and 90s. 
you know, in that movie. And then other characters have had, you know, where they're in the future and they have this fascination with the past. So obviously this is kind of playing up one of those tropes, but jet skis is just one of the weirdest things, you know, mm -hmm. I just thought that was such an odd thing, but you know, it's also kind of like a middle-aged man move, you know, it's like a midlife crisis move sort of thing. But what was interesting about that shot to me though, was when they were talking about like the end of time that, it, you know, once the timekeepers uh, finish unraveling all the various epilogues, which I thought it was a very you know, interesting way of describing it. And then they were going to be, you know, they're just going to finish it. They're going to, they're going to set the timeline and then everyone's going to meet at the end and just kind of go out with a bang. Like that is such a weird way of looking at time. I mean, I get it from their perspective. It makes sense. But for me, I'm like, it's almost like very kind of like apathetic. Yeah, and I like to uh, brings up the the conversation about uh, free will. You know, that was a big debate in the first episode. It's like, well, if everything's supposed to be happening anyway, does that mean like here at the TVA is that it's the most free place in the world because technically there is no you know set path yet. We do have free will here at least. You know. Yeah, and that is something where it's like I like how he's trying to like downplay it. like, well, it doesn't really work just like that. You know. And because uh, then again, if everyone, if everything is preordained, then how can a variant happen? But, but the, they also, but they did explain how the Loki variant happened when they were talking about the timeline and that the TVA's job to go in and fix it. And they said like, you know, Loki's like, look, uh, you have one variant. And if it, if it reaches, you know, it, the Nexus event, it can then sprawl into, into different timelines, which then cause other things to happen that shouldn't happen. So when the Avengers went back in time to get the Tesseract uh, in Endgame, th they said that that was supposed to happen, but I think that was a lie because because uh, effectively that variation did result in Loki getting the Tesseract and then dipping out. So there's there's a connection there with Endgame that they're either they're just kind of willfully ignoring or they they don't quite know like or they're just kind of setting us up to kind of question it until they till they solidify it yeah most likely i think the show well you know i think it does a great job of raising questions you know and i think hopefully it'll deliver the answers in regards to that because like you know you do any kind of time travel story it can get really wonky if you don't handle it correctly but i think so far it's like it's asking those questions i think it is going to deliver answers that'll hopefully make sense in the end you know well it's not even really uh it's not even really like you know it's not even really discussing the time the time travel stuff because everything still like effectively happens their job is to stop any variation from happening mm -hmm. so it's like you know it so it does kind of open up the door like oh we're things that the things happen that were altered in the original you know in the in the first 22 23 movies of these of this franchise uh and that's kind of cool to have that be in there and to not quite know everything about it just yet but did you catch the line where uh, Loki or where Mobius called Loki an icy runt. Yeah, yeah, he said he called him like basically like a, like, a, like a, was that the scene where they were talking about him being like a sad like lost yeah like boy? you're a sad little boy like yeah you're you're an icy runt because he's you know he's a frost giant mm -hmm. and and they never really talk you know they they mention it in the first Thor movie right we see that happen in the first Thor movie they never really mention it past that they you know like Loki is a god of mischief he's a shapeshifter. But he also uh, he's a frost giant. So he's yeah, always never projecting. really show that. Yeah, he's always like projecting what his actual form is. You know, no, he's pro he's projecting the form he wants you to see. Right, right, right. Yeah. So it's like it's in the form that he believes that is the most acceptable, but it's not his true form. And I wonder if we're going to be able to see anything like that in this. Probably not. But they did touch upon the frost giant thing. And then he also referenced his birth, you know, like, well, you know, like, where are you from? Like, oh, my father uh like you know frost giant okay well who raised you odin did and he's like you know i mean it's an interesting discussion about like you know nature versus nurture i think was kind of what they were going for mm. but i mean there's a lot going on in the dialogue in this episode that i think is very fascinating and again it's not as like punchy or jokey as the last time i know the scene with the uh with the salad and talking about the apocalyptic event and using the idea of pushing hulk off the rainbow bridge which was pretty funny that he mentioned that considering that he never lived that timeline, actually. But he's but this is also coming off of Loki right after he got beat to shit by the by, by Hulk 
in Avengers back in 2012. So he's still a little bit, he could tell he's still got a little bit of animosity. He's still a little bit angry at Hulk for that beatdown. So, you know, I thought that was kind of, that was a little funny, like kind of pseudo reference to multiple films there. Um, but I did think the scene itself was pretty good, just mostly because it was like trying to explain the metaphor and then like, I get it, but you could also kind of see where Owen Wilson or Mobius was just like, it wasn't even really about the food. It was like, just, what are you like, what are you doing? Yeah. It's like, like, it's just another one, another one of your games you're just messing with me and just to like have fun or like, what is this even about? Cause I don't even understand where you're like, I kind of get what you're going with this, but it's like, it's such a dumb metaphor, you know, it's like just grabbing yeah. random stuff. It's very random, but I think it works for like Loki is like trying to not be a trickster. And that, of course, is showing a little bit of character development on his end, because I know there's that thing at the end where he's like, ha ha ha. I was just I was I was only playing them, but I don't think he's playing them. I think he legitimately he's legitimately intrigued to see where this thing goes. But he did. But he did admit he said the quiet part out loud when trying to convince Mobius to go back to Pompeii. And he just says, I love being right. And like, that's how, you know, I'm not lying is I love being right. Mm -hmm. And that is true. And I think that's going to come back to play later on. They're sit there's, they're definitely like laying the seeds for what is going to be, uh, obviously like the, the, the big finale because we got four episodes left. It feels like there should be so much more. I don't, I'm not even anywhere near ready for this thing to be over yet, but they're definitely like laying down a lot of the seeds. So let's talk about the. Uh, the finale because that that was pretty amazing however however did you catch the did you catch the bit where like mobius again and they're kind of establishing mobius being a little bit too trusting right when when mobius pulled out loki's daggers and handed them to him yeah and the and the lady and the lady came by and says what the hell are you doing basically just takes them away yeah, like no 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 like just takes them puts them back and i thought that was pretty funny because you can tell that Mobius is starting to really like Loki. Like they they have that animosity, but he also is like really happy that he's there and he's happy that Loki's excited because that excitement is also rubbing off on him. Right. Cause I, th I think they're trying to establish that they're kind of like two kindred, kindred uh, spirits in a way because it's like Mobius is also a little bit rebellious and has that playful back and forth like with the judge, for example, you know, that, that's something they're I think kind of like setting up a little bit too. So it's like they, had, like you know they are co-workers in a way and he is annoyed by loki a bit but he, there's a that mischievous chai side of him is like something that he kind of relates to well there's also that and the fact that uh mobius i think can see that when loki applies himself he can actually get it done you know and like i think that's another factor as well like because you know originally Mo, like, you know and when and when they bring loki uh to the tent he is stalling for time you know he is very much stalling for time uh, trying to, I think, you know, kind of gauge where things are, but, you know, he almost didn't get a second chance. I mean, obviously the show wouldn't be Loki if that didn't happen, but at least when they got down to what I, well, I will say is I, what I enjoyed was like the Kablooey uh, gum, because I think that was a clue for them to show up at this particular event in time. And what was great about it was like, it, like, the, cause you know, ever since the first Iron Man, we've, we've seen rocks on in the background of these movies, right? You've had like the rocks on corporations popped up multiple times. Agents of shield that's popped up multiple times, but the fact that they had a rocks on Amazon variant, <laughs> right? It's like their version of like Walmart, the, the, their version of like Walmart on steroids, uh, mixed with like Amazon. I mean, it was, yeah. And it, where was it located? What was it? Like Hillary, it was in Alabama. Alabama. It was like, yeah. yeah, it was in, uh, it was in Alabama. Uh, right at the, but the thing is, I don't quite know like where it was. It was like what Heaven Hills, Alabama. Yeah, something like that. Like I know it was like Hills something. I thought it was either Heaven Hills or Hillberry Hills or something. Yeah, I'm looking it up real quick to see if, uh, um, you know, I don't know. I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I think it's like a comic location or something. It, it might be seems. a comic location. Yeah, but it's right there on the Gulf of Mexico during this massive, massive, uh, you know, just like cataclysmic event like it's obviously it's a storm you can i mean when they show when they get there and they show the wide shot of like the rocks cart store and that's this illuminated and you start seeing like the flooding waters coming on in and it's just like blowing up uh, you know propane tanks and other gas stations are just exploding from like all of the impact like you know that there's a lot of bad things that are happening that death is imminent right. for a lot of people 
Yen, I don't know if you caught this, but this is like a big moment too. Like Mobius, like they go into that room and all like the people are like just camping out there, just trying to like weather down the storm and hopefully like you know make out of it taking shelter. And the TVA agents being really aggressive with them, and Mobius like, what the hell are you doing? Like, calm down a little bit. He's like, well, they're gonna die anyway. They should be scared. It's like, whoa, buddy, whoa. Like that's pretty messed up thing to say. Like, you know, showing that, that a lot of these TVA agents have like really no compassion for these people because they well, see I- them as like irrelevant in a way. And they do see them as irrelevant. It's, I mean, because, well, now in, in the first episode when they got there at the end, that one guy was like, ah, just reset it and let's get out of here. So, like, that guy was more lax. This guy is a lot more hardcore. Like, you could tell he would probably beat the crap out of that old guy if that old guy tried to stop him. You know, like, that's how crazy he is because he doesn't, and he also doesn't care. And you're right that he, they probably view them as being irrelevant. They probably view them as being insignificant because they're, there's no need to try to protect them. They are already predetermined to die in this moment which is sad actually it's like it's it's really kind of sad um that they they set it up and then they didn't really give it a lot of time because to, to kind of like i don't know maybe like settle in with it because a lot of that scene was just like loki and the other loki doing a very interesting uh trick because we learned at the beginning that the different variations of loki have different variations of powers which is actually pretty cool because that's going to mean that Loki himself is not going to actually have to like, you know, it's not just going to be a clone situation and whatever this particular Loki was doing by having the ability to like touch somebody and transfer their essence. Uh, that was like, that kind of caught me by surprise. Cause I thought like, Oh, Loki's going to hang out with the one lady. They are going to get a little bit of that, that one-on-one time, you know, maybe they're going to develop a bit of a rapport. Cause he did say right beforehand that he understands that he needs to earn trust. So, right. And ironically, it seems like he's like burnt that trust in a way. Cause I was noticing like, oh shoot, the lady's probably going to think that Loki did something to her. Cause she already doesn't trust him or like him anyway. So, that, you know, she gets knocked out and wakes up and doesn't know where he is. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. That trust is like getting further and further, like away from actually being built. Yeah. You can totally see like, well, I mean, she may, I don't know if we don't know if they have any recollection of what happens while while loki is controlling them like our lady loki is controlling them we don't really know but obviously in this case she she kind of came out and she's like i don't know what happened so obviously there's no recollection there but i thought was great though was like how it went through the different people like the one guy buying plants yeah yeah my you know, favorite actually was a uh, randy. randy randy was, was great best. randy was great just like the the rocks cart employee you know like oh for this you can just look down to the bed you can call me uh call me randy you can just call me randy I like that. And then uh, like, here comes then the big guy, like the big Alabama trucker guy, and, like beating the crap out of Loki, which is like, how do you beat the crap out of a God? You know, <laughs> you don't mess with Alabama truckers. Okay. Apparently, apparently them and Hulk have a bit in common. So, I mean, there's, so there's, you know, interesting things there, but then what I liked was when like Loki, cause you could tell Loki was stalling for time in and of himself. He was trying to like, get uh he was trying to draw the other loki out and and she knew that's what he was doing and she was just using him at the same time to enact her plan uh which still i i'm i have some weird theories about that um and uh, but what was interesting was when mobius found the agent who went missing c20 who the hunter c20 who went missing at the beginning of the episode and she's like i gave them the location of the timekeepers yeah, and she's in this, like this big mental breakdown. It's like she's lost her mind in a way. Yeah, but she uh, but she wasn't the only one who was helping uh, Loki. Oh, no, 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 she was helping Loki at the time because Loki. Well, we don't know how many people Loki can control. Lady Loki can control because obviously, like, while Loki was with Randy, there was somebody else behind the scenes that was, you know, wiring together those uh, those time resetters. So. I, I'm presuming that was Lady Loki who was just, you know, using Randy as a distraction. But what I found to be really interesting about that, though, was like the mission itself or what it was like, because clearly it's not about resetting the timeline. It's about chaos. That's what Lady Loki wants to do is to do chaos. But is it a? I mean, is she lying about it being control? Yeah, that's the interesting discussion because like Loki's like trying to bargain with her and says, Well, I'm trying to like take control of the TVA and you can be my lieutenant, we can rule the TVA together. And she's like, That's not what my mission is. It's like, well, if she's setting out to the sh- to destroy the TVA and like just cause like complete chaos as you're saying, or 
yeah, that's that's what I'm going to be really interested in finding as we go through these episodes. Like, what is exactly her motivation? Why is she doing all this? Because I think it might be a case of like maybe the TVA is truly corrupt and she knows something that uh, Loki, maybe even Mobius himself, doesn't even know. And she's actually doing this for like it's horrible methods of going about it, but she's doing it for what she believes is a righteous cause, you know? Well, yeah, that's actually a really interesting theory on that one because, um, you know, I've seen a lot of chatter about, and we mentioned this last week too, I think you mentioned this last week, about um, there being uh, Kang the Conqueror being one of the timekeepers. Mm -hmm. And then they're also being, um, you know, there's, I guess, like when, when they were in the judge's office and there were the statues of the timekeepers there, someone had pointed out that it looked like one of them looked like Jonathan Majors who is reportedly playing Kang. He was asked about being in Loki and he said, I don't know what you're talking about. So obviously take that with a grain of salt. Right. Well, the, well, the judge is a uh, uh, Ravona and that's a major character that's uh, in, in the comics. Uh, she was the bride of Kang uh, in a forced marriage. So oh. that's actually a big character in King King's lore. Okay. So I wouldn't be shocked if they were like subtly teasing something related to that. I mean, maybe, yeah. You don't sign someone like uh, like Gugu and then um, this user for this or whatever. That's so why I think this is going to have long lasting uh, repercussions because, you know, for one, obviously when the when the bomb goes off and you start seeing everyone back at TVA lose their shit over it, and and you start seeing the timeline fracture. I mean, I don't know about you, but my thought was like, oh, oh, they're setting up, they're setting up, you know, a multiverse of madness and no way home. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, did we just see the creation of the multiverse? Like, that's I mean, exactly what I thought. Well, yeah, or like the releasing of the multiverse. Because remember, in the first episode, they said that there was the great multiverse war and that the timekeepers worked to keep it as one, one timeline. And so, you know, yeah, now we're seeing a bunch of variants. And they, they looked at they were all rapidly approaching Nexus level events. So I, that's going to be a major problem. If, if you got a whole bunch of Nexus level events and everything else, holy crap, like what's going to happen? And then what I liked at the end there, though, was that Loki followed Lady Loki. Yeah, that was really interesting to me as well. He, like, he takes like one last look at Mobius and just runs in. He's like, and then Mobius is like upset, like, dang it. Like he left us, basically. Yeah, the thing is, though, but I think I don't think I mean, obviously, Loki, you know, some people might might think, oh, he did this to uh, to protect his ass and or because he's evil or he wants to do his plan. I think it's a kind of a combination of all of them. Like, clearly, he figured he was going to be blamed for all of it. And so, you know, he decided this was going to be his best bet at either getting away for the moment or being able to stop her himself because he's going to want to stop her himself. You know, so I think whatever the next episode is that we're going to end up seeing them having like conversations and them doing their thing while Mobius is trying to track them all down and reset the timelines the best way that they can. But I mean, I'm really wondering how much, you know, I, I really wonder what's going to happen with all that. I just it's. There's a lot to process at the end of that episode because that was a real like jaw dropping, oh my god sort of ending to that show. I mean, we're only two episodes in. Like my god, I know there's only like what four episodes left. It's like it's going by so quick when you think about it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and that's the great thing about about Marvel. I mean, having it be like these 55 minute long or 50 minute long episodes, already longer than WandaVision, already longer than Falcon and Winter Soldier. And I think that the direction on it is pretty great. The musical score for the end credits was just fantastic. And the uh, the writing is really good. I mean, the show is is already setting itself up to be better than the previous two, uh, which WandaVision was a hard bar to beat in my mind. And this has already relatively surpassed it just for being a different style show and what it's setting up. And the thing is, like, even looking through Reddit before we started recording to see what those guys are trying to say is uh, they are you know they're they're very like excited to see what happens next like you have when you have the community coming together after the episode and they're like what the hell does any of this mean and then you get your theories and you get your discussions that's how you know you're on to something that's going to be um super big that's how you know you have like compelling television yeah yeah and again this is the guy who's writing multiverse of madness so clearly Clearly, this is going to tie into Multiverse of Madness, which makes me makes me ask the question, will Loki make an appearance in Multiverse of Madness? 
Yeah, that's that is a big question. Um, I know we're talking last week. I mean, do you think like this is a sign we're gonna get other variants of Loki in the show played by other actors? I mean, at this point, like sky's the limit, you know? Uh, yeah, I think we are gonna go through a lot because well, if they are fracturing the timeline, if they are fracturing everything, uh, yeah, it's gonna open the door to a bunch of different variants of Loki, and we're gonna get a lot, learn a lot more about the uh, the lesser variants, at least according to him. But I mean, I mean, I guess because we're coming up in about a half hour now. I mean, uh, final thoughts on the episode. I mean, like, you know, how do you feel about it? Yeah, I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was even better than the first one. It was very tightly written, had a lot. I mean, the the ending alone, like that payoff of seeing Lady Loki finally in the MCU um, and that jaw dropping ending where it's like, what the heck's going to happen next? I thought it was fantastic. I mean, again, the directing was very solid, as you pointed out, and the musical score was fantastic as well. I mean. Honestly, if it keeps going at this pace, I definitely agree with you. I think this is going to end up being my favorite out of all the Disney Plus shows so far. I really do. Yeah, I really don't think there's going to be any, uh, you know, any kind of downtime in this. It feels like that while they are letting the characters breathe and discuss things, we had a lot of moments of just Mobius and Loki talking. And I really like that because it was just allowing both of them to just kind of get to know one another, allowing us to kind of get to know Loki in a more intimate yeah. setting. And character development too. It seems like it's like like we talk about the jet ski thing. Like I definitely think that's going to be foreshadowing something later for that character. What exactly it's going to be, I don't know. But well, I mean, yeah, you can tell at this point they're very much kind of setting up a bunch of things, and then we're going to start seeing those storylines play out over the span of the next month, which is just um, like now. And now I just want to go read theories. Yeah, as weird the, as the is. only thing I didn't like about the episode was the was that musical moment with the the Bonnie Taylor uh, hero song. That was it. Yeah, Other than that it was a perfect episode. Well, and I'm wondering, um, I'm really wondering if uh, that's going to come back again, right? If we're going to see a moment again of where they're going to play, I need a hero, and it's going to be Loki, the one doing the fighting and being the hero. That will be fascinating to see if that actually plays out. I don't know, but I mean, Marvel likes symmetry and, and they like to kind of, you know, they like to have a lot of callbacks. Yeah, apparently there was like a Star Wars reference in the first episode. I totally missed it. I was really yeah, there's a Wallace that. and Gromit ep- uh, reference as well. Apparently, I'm like Wallace and Gromit where, <laughs> you know, I had to go back and look for that. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things where it's like, OK, well, if they're layering everything, it's going to be a lot of fun to go back. And I think a lot of people are going to be uh, really, uh, you know, I think we're going to see a lot of the articles that are like, oh, here's here's 28,000 things you missed in Loki episode two. And, uh, and I'm probably going to read them because I want to know what I missed while I wait to watch the episode again uh, tomorrow. So, I mean, my thoughts on it are basically like, uh, yeah, I was pretty blown away by it. I'm really excited that they've been able to do what they've been able to do with it. And uh, and they've got my full and complete interest. So I bring on the next episode, you know? Yeah, Damn absolutely. It. But uh, but all right, everyone. Uh, RJ, where can people find you on YouTube? Yeah, if you want to find me on YouTube, just search up Resident Justice. I'm pretty easy to find. Uh, same thing for my Twitter and Instagram as well. If you're interested in following me over there on that, those platforms. Cool, man. Well, and of course, if you guys are just catching this, be sure to uh, leave a like, leave a comment. What's your favorite part from the episode? What's your theories for the future? And uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. Have yourself a great day. And thank you for watching this Loki episode two discussion. See you guys and peace out.